My last video was kind of a love letter to this synthesizer, which I just acquired, the Polyevolver. And I mentioned in that video that it's incredibly quirky, and one of those quirks is something that I actually wish and have been wishing for in more modern synthesizers for a long time, and that's the ability to affect the clock with the sequencer. I've done a lot of work with the Pro 3 in the past, and that's one thing that I feel like would really unlock it for more generative music is the ability to adjust the clock with the sequencer or an LFO or just something. It might be a real pain and problem to achieve that. I don't know, I don't make synthesizers, I just play them. But I can't think of many modern synths that are capable of doing this, and I think it's kind of a shame. I don't own every synthesizer, so if you do know of one that can do this, uh, let me know in the comments below. I don't review scents for a living, I just like to show you what I do with the ones that I happen to have. My last video on this scent was more like a mini documentary to it. This one is gonna be in the weeds with it, and we're gonna walk through kind of how I make a patch like this and how the patches that I make on this synth, different than some other scents, I don't really use them to fit into an application, I use them as inspiration to start an idea. And when you're actually sequencing the sequencer clock, it can get really wild really quickly and it's hard to fit that within the framework of something else. But it's really a lot of fun to build something around that. So that's what I'm gonna attempt to show in this video. I have set up here a basic program. And the first thing I'm gonna do is turn down the analog oscillators because I really enjoy sequencing the FM with the sequencer of the two digital oscillators. There's no FM between the two analog oscillators. You just have shape modulation. I'm gonna bring up to 50%. You'll hear immediately that it's only coming from the left channel and that's another weird quirk of this synth is the oscillators are actually hard panned left and right, which you can go in and manually bring them both up the middle but that's somehow less fun. And <laughs> once you start really getting in the weeds with this thing, you can see the possibilities that having a true stereo path can open up. I'm gonna now bring in my fourth oscillator, and I'm gonna set the shape of both to a sine wave so that you can hear me more clearly. And we go to the star of the show today, the sequencer, which if I go to my destination of the sequencer, you see I have a lot of options here. And I'm going to have it be oscillator three, and I'm gonna set up uh, lane one to be the frequency of oscillator three. And I can actually record in a sequence by pressing right and then start stop on the sequencer. Thrilling. Can go to lane two, and I want that to be oscillator four. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna play it in. I can set each lane to reset at different times, just like with the Pro 3, you can set different lengths per lane. So I'm gonna do that by <laughs> scrolling all the way through on step 16 of lane two, and that's gonna cause it to reset after the 15th step every time. So now we have one lane of 16 steps, one of 15, and that's a way to create an ever-changing sequence. All right, going back to the beginning now, I can start to do something interesting and I'm going to make lane three. If I scroll all the way over in my destinations, somewhere towards the end, sequencer clock. Now it gets a bit weird here and I'm gonna have to consult the manual. And I'll include this maybe as an overlay on the screen so that you can see this as well, because it's a little confusing. It works via a multiplier based on a step value of 40. So if basically a sequence step is 40, it's actually at the clock of the tempo of the master. If it's set to 20, which is half of 40, if you went to math class, the clock will be twice as fast just for that step. A step value of 80 would be twice as slow as the set clock. And 10 would be four times faster and so on. So. Yeah, I'm gonna set the length to eight so that it resets after eight. Let's set all of these to 40 and test that theory. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Let's make it 11 steps, actually. I can decrease the overall BPM. Now, another neat thing about this synth is we can actually sequence the shape of the wavetables in the digital oscillators, kind of like some of the Korg synths that you may be familiar with. It's Dave Smith, so that kind of makes sense in his involvement with Korg around that time. But we do have all of the wavetables from the Prophet VS in this synth. So that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, we can't morph them in the same way that we can in like the Prophet 12 later on, but we do have a lot more wavetables, wave shapes here. And uh, to me, they just kind of sound better, more vibrant, maybe a bit trashier. So with that in mind, I want to set up, um, let's say lane four as my shape sequencing lane. So I'm gonna set it to only seven steps. And my destination, I actually don't have to assign it to be anything. It can be off because I can assign that over here. Let's say if I want it to sequence uh, oscillator three's shape, I can go to sequencer lane four. Now nothing's gonna happen until I change each of the values of the steps. And it's actually gonna select whichever wavetable I have selected here. I'm gonna filter that down a bit now that we're dealing with richer harmonics. Now what if I wanted oscillator 4 to be sequenced by, let's say, lane 3. Now I can change the starting wave or the wave that I can play to a sawtooth. So that is already pretty cool in my personal opinion but we can get crazier with it because we can also sequence or assign the sequencer to do some FM stuff, which is why I've chosen our digital oscillators. So I'm going to go into my four extra modulation slots. This is kind of the early version of the mod matrix here. Let's say sequence one, which is also controlling the pitch of oscillator three. What if that were also doing some FM? So sequence one, and then the destination is gonna be FM, let's say uh, oscillator three, frequency modulating oscillator four. And let's get our sequence going again, and then we'll dial up the amount and see what kind of changes that makes. Let's go back and switch it around where um, oscillator four is FMing <laughs> oscillator three. I'm gonna make the mod wheel open the right low pass filter because I mentioned the stereo split of this synth. Not only does it have each oscillator hard panned left or right, it also has a completely separate filter 
low-pass filter for both the left and the right channel that we can access within the mod matrix and then set that up to move at different times to create even more wild stereo imaging. It can get absolutely insane. So I'm gonna set up the mod wheel to open just the right low pass frequency. Give that some amount. Now when I open the mod wheel, we should hear the right side filter opening up. And the reason that I assigned the right side filter is because we have this left right split tilt, which tilts the filters so that the left side is more open. And unfortunately you can't do the opposite way. It's one of the weird quirks of this synth. Like you can't shift it where the right side is more open. So this is kind of my workaround for that so that I can kind of fake opening each side with hands-on individual control. It's, it's weird and it's hard to explain, but uh, trust me. <laughs> so that, opening the right side filter, the left-right split is gonna tilt the filters so that it's leaning more towards the left side uh, being open. So you can hear that. Now if I use both together, I almost sort of have individual control. Hopefully that makes some degree of sense. So we have the multi-tap delays, just like in the Prophet 12, except there are three of them in this case. The FM gets absolutely insane. But because you have analog filters to shave off some of those crazy harmonics, it can get really, really nice. We do have the output hack similar to the Prophet 12, but in this case, I like what they did on the Prophet 12 better because uh, they moved the output hack and the distortion. Well, not the distortion, the distortion is still at the end, but they moved the output hack and some of the decimators and stuff before the filters so that you can shape how those things react to the sound. Here, the output hack is at the end of the chain and it can really... So you see, it can get really fizzy and out of control pretty fast. Really love filtering this thing down with the four pole filter. But you've got all of this interesting harmonics and the FM and everything that gets so incredibly crazy. It's like bubbling right under the surface. And I absolutely love that. What if I had LFO one, slow it right down and send it to one of our delays, delay one time. Let's send LFO2 to do some ring modulation between these two oscillators. They can also do ring modulation. Let's put it through some spatium reverb from the wonderful Specular Tempus.
So that's the Poly Evolver, and that's the Sequencer, and it can do some crazy things that I wish more sense sequencers could do. Like I said, if you know of other sense that can do that, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know, maybe from some synth makers or people who design instruments, why it's not more common, because I feel like just for generative stuff and coming up with ideas, it's an incredibly powerful tool that I would love to see implemented in more things. If you want to see more with the Poly Evolver, you can subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing more stuff featuring it, no doubt. If you want to learn more about the basics of subtractive synthesis so you can figure out how to make patches on your own, I have a free workshop that will walk you through all those things in the description. It also comes with a free PDF guide that has all the basic terminology. If you don't like to watch me for any longer than you absolutely have to, you can just put that on your refrigerator and go from there. And if you want to see that video that I made about the Poly Evolver that is much more about its historical context and is kind of my overall impressions and has more patch examples in it, you can click on this video right here. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.